In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Repent and believe in the Gospel. It's Lenten Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Come back to the Lord with all your heart. Stay tuned. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. It is Monday, the 18th of March, 2024. Fifth week of Lent and participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Ambassador Winnie Chwe Sakunda celebrating her birthday today from Berlin, Germany. Text for us the first reading. Perpetua Shikanda from Kitengela, Kenya celebrating her birthday today. Text for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Eli Elijah, a Salesian of Don Bosco, working in Burundi. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading. Now I'm to die, yet I've done none of these things. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Daniel 13 Verse 1 to 9, 15 to 17, 19 to 30, 33 to 62. In those days, there was a man living in Babylon whose name was Joachim, and he took a wife named Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, a very beautiful woman and one who feared the Lord. Her parents were righteous and had taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich and had a spacious garden adjoining his house, and the Jews used to come to him because he was the most honored of them all. In that year, two elders from the people were appointed as judges. Concerning them, the Lord had said, Iniquity came forth from Babylon, from elders who were judges, who were supposed to govern the people. These men were frequently at Joachim's house, and all who had suits at law came to them. When the people departed at noon, Susanna would go into her husband's garden to walk. The two elders used to see her every day, going in and walking about, and they began to desire her, and they pervaded their minds and turned away, their eyes from looking to heaven or remembering righteous judgment. Once, while they were watching for an opportune day, she went in as before with only two maids and wished to bath in the garden, for it was very hot and no one was there except the two elders who had hidden themselves and were watching her. She said to her maids, Bring me oil and ointment, and shut the garden doors so that I may bath. When the maids had gone out, the two elders rose and ran to her and said, Look, the garden doors are shut. No one sees us, and we are in love with you. So give us your consent and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that a young man was with you, and this was why you sent your maids away. Susanna sighed deeply and said, I'm hemmed in on every side, for if I do this thing, it is death for me, and if I do not, 
I shall not escape your hands. I choose not to do it and to fall into your hands rather than to sin in the sight of the Lord. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and the two elders shouted against her and one of them ran and opened the garden doors. When the household servants heard the shouting in the garden, they rushed in at the side door to see what had happened to her. And when the elders told their tale, the servants were greatly ashamed, for nothing like this had ever been said about Susanna. The next day, when the people gathered at the house of her husband Joachim, the two elders came, full of their wicked plot to her to have Susanna put to death. They said before the people, Send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilke, who is the wife of Joachim. So they sent for her, and she came with her parents, her children, and all her kindred. But her family and friends and all who saw her wept. Then the two elders stood up in the midst of the people and laid their hands upon her head. And she, weeping, looked up to heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. The elders said, As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids, shut the garden doors, and dismissed the maids. Then a young man who had been hidden came to her and lay with her. We were in a corner of the garden, and when we saw this wickedness, we ran to them. We saw them embracing, but we could not hold the man, for he was too strong for us. And he opened the doors and dashed out. So we seized this woman and asked her who the young man was, but she would not tell us. These things we testify. The assembly believed them because they were elders of the people and judges, and they condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O eternal God, who discern what is secret, who are aware of all things before they come to be, you know that these men have borne false witness against me, and now I am to die, yet I have done none of the things that they have wickedly invented against me. The Lord heard her cry, and as she was being laid away to be put to death, God aroused the Holy Spirit of a young lad named Daniel, and he cried with a loud voice, I'm innocent of the blood of this woman. All the people turned to him and said, What is this that you have said? Taking his stand in the midst of them, he said, Are you such fools, you sons of Israel? Have you condemned a daughter of Israel without examination and without learning the facts, return to the place of judgment, for these men have borne false witness against her. Then all the people returned in haste, and the elders said to him, Come, sit among us and inform us, for God has given you that right. And Daniel said to them, Separate them far from each other, and I will examine them. When they were separated from each other, he summoned one of them and said to him, You old relic of wicked days, your sins have now come home, which you have committed in the past, pronouncing unjust judgments, condemning the innocent, and letting the guilty go free. Though the Lord said, Do not put to death an innocent and righteous person, now then, if you really saw her, tell me this. Under what tree did you see them being intimate with each other? He answered, under a mastic tree. And Daniel said, very well, you have lied against your own head, for the angel of God has received the sentence from God and will immediately cut you in two. Then he put him aside and commanded them to bring the other. 
And he said to him, You offspring of Canaan and not of Judah, beauty has deceived you and lust has perverted your heart. This is how you both have been dealing with the daughters of Israel, and they were intimate with you through fear. But a daughter of Judah would not endure your wickedness. Now then tell me, under what tree did you catch them being intimate with each other? He answered, under an evergreen oak. And Daniel said to him, Very well, you also have lied against your own head. For the angel of God is waiting with his sword to sow you in two, that he may destroy you both. Then all the assembly shouted loudly and blessed God, who serves those who hope in him. And they rose against the two elders, for out of their own mouths Daniel had convinced them of bearing false witness, and they did to them as they had wickedly planned to do to their neighbor, acting in accordance with the law of Moses, they put them to death. Thus innocent blood was saved that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Psalm 23, 1 to 3a, 3b to 4, 5 to 6, response is taken from Psalm 23, verse 4, A, B, C. And the response is, Though I should walk in the body of the shadow of the I shall want fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near as full waters he leaves me he revives my soul he revives my soul. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil will I fear, for you are with me. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. You are crook and your staff will give me comfort. Your staff will give me comfort. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of the overflowing 
Shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of the No evil would I fear, for you are with me. Gospel Acclamation Ezekiel 33, 11 Glory and praise to you, O Christ. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord but that he turn from his way and live. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 8, verse 1 to verse 11. At that time, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more, he bent down and they wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are people who look forward to a day like today in the period of Lent when we read the story of Susanna and when we read the story of a woman caught in adultery. That's what we have today. And the message is, it is God who vindicates. That's what the word wants to tell us. That justice is not from any human being. Because human beings are selfish even when they're executing justice. But at the end of the day, it is God who grants us true justice. Whether we are right or wrong. At the end of the day, no one has any right to anything if that person doesn't know how to rely on the God who vindicates. We see that in the story of Susanna, the woman who represents the oppressive systems of our society. We have so many people who are suffering innocently because of a lot of uh, oppressive systems. 
And I will start from the general premise where I will talk about the injustices going on among nations. The elders, those nations that are seen as elders are out there oppressing the younger ones, the Susannas of our continents. I'm not just talking about Africa. I'm talking about even Asia, those countries that don't have their own voices. A time will come when a Daniel will arise and make us understand how crooked and how wicked have been these nations. Our task is just to pray. Pray like Susanna did and Maintaining our innocence, maintaining our own principles. Even when there are people trying to threaten our principles, we'll still maintain them and say, no, it's better to die. Let me die an innocent person than to die because I feared I would lose funding, because I feared if I don't do what they are asking me to do, I will end up dying in poverty. It's better we remain hungry, free men and women than well-fed slaves. We know there are agendas being advanced from the elders, the crooked elders of Babylon, advancing agendas, and they are pushing those agendas on us, poor nations, poor Susannas, so that we may and accept their money. We say no. We want to go to death like Susanna, knowing that at the end there will be a Daniel who will come and cry on our behalf, and God is going to vindicate us. Let us keep those principles. I'm also talking about a lot of other things that are happening in our nations, even in those poor nations, where people, especially our women folk, have to sometimes sacrifice their own moral principles in order to get a job, in order to be promoted. Please remain Susannas in your workplace. Remain Susannas. If you don't get that job, there will be a Daniel who will come up and will vindicate you. Our God will vindicate you. You will get a job that you deserve. Don't destroy what God has put in you, the dignity. You know, we have so many people who want that promotion. We have so many people who want that position in a political office and they will do everything. They will even sacrifice their own faith. But please, remain Susannas. Remain Susannas and God is going to speak on your behalf. You will get that position rightfully. There are people who are in the political offices who did not bribe anybody, who did not give anything to anybody in order to be there. And you can be one of them. And what God gives lasts. I'm talking about you in your own family life. You have seen how the elders grown in wickedness in your own marriage. By elders, I'm looking at your own spouse and how that spouse has been tempting you to get into doing terrible things that compromise your own faith. Be a Susanna in that marriage. Don't do things to revenge or to show him that you can be like him or to show her that you can be like her. Be a Susanna and God is going to send a Daniel who will speak on your behalf. Don't allow such things to happen. Let these remaining days of our Lenten observance renew your strength that you may remain faithful to the end. I know about you and your studies in that college, in that university, and how some of your professors have been telling you, you know, you just come to me. If you are able to give yourself to me, I'm going to give you good marks. Be a Susanna. And a Daniel will help you get good marks 
without sacrificing anything concerning your dignity. Look at the gospel passage of today. We see the other side. Where even God speaks on behalf of those who are weak. We just have to humble ourselves. When we find ourselves in a sinful situation, let us not justify anything. This woman never spoke a word. Those who were speaking are those who had grown old in wickedness like the elders in the first reading. They were the ones ready to throw a stone. But you know what? If you are humble enough in your wickedness, you know you have done wrong and you go for that confession. Don't justify anything. Has anyone condemned you? No, that's all you have to say. No, no one has condemned me. I know I have done wrong. I know I am sinful. And that's all I know. There are people who go for confession and they want to explain their reason for sinning. Don't explain the reason why you sinned. Because when you start explaining the reason why you sinned, you are justifying yourself. You just say, I have sinned and these are my sins. And the blame is on you. And let Jesus say, go and sin no more. That's all. And we want to prepare ourselves well for the remaining days of our Lent to say, Lord, help us to be Susannas. Help us to be like this woman who never spoke a word apart from the admission of guilt in our lives in order to follow you up to the cross. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Monday to you. Thanks be to God. Lord.